And welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Dungeon Quest. When we last left off, candles! Which we all take. You add a candle to your burden. Look, table. The table bears the usual writing accoutrements. There's a quill pen, snagged from a helpless, hapless goose, and an open inkwell, which, alas, is bone dry. The appointments are elegant. A half-finished letter lies at the front of the desk, and a candle, probably for seating purposes as well as lightning, Purchase a kilter in a holder close to the far edge. We took the candle. Let's get the parchment. Take him. Let's read the parchment. This one isn't in the manual. Letter is done with a flourishing handwriting that's not all that difficult to make out. It appears to be the second page of a letter, but there is none other around here. Perhaps it was the first draft of a letter that was rewritten. The letter reads, Two months in this place. There's almost no one left. One by one we have all met our doom trying to reach the centre of the underground chamber, a chance to get through to him and averse this horrible evil. I go myself this day where all others have failed. C has the key, so now there might be a way through. The letter stops mid-sentence. Mid-page. Hmm. Awesome. We can travel east. I don't think we want to, though. We're missing two. Do we do not want to be here at all. As you pass over the threshold of the room, you notice a young woman, beautifully dressed and statuesque, facing the window. She's physically as beautiful as an elegant attire. She's standing with her eyes at her side, hands at her side, crying softly. As you enter, she turns to you, her lovely flowing gown gently twisting after her. Just as you are about to ask whether she has any interesting tattoos, what? She faces you. In a hurried vo voice between sobs, she tells you, Beware. Listen carefully, or you are doomed. I have only a little time. Don't look into the amulet, as it is certain entrapment. You must! She pauses, looks up, and screams in terror. No! She then begins to fade away like a ghost. In a few final desperate words, she gasps, The sword! She grasps her throat. There, I have told you. The sword is the key. She gasps, and again, almost completely transparent now, here's the sword, and she is gone. The room dims considerably without her presence. You find yourself alone in a well-decorated bedroom. Beyond the curtain bed is a large open window overlooking the misty garden beyond. The sky seems darker than before, as a wet breeze gently sends the lace of the bed swaying. The only door is the entrance on the west. The furniture is clean and well-crafted, the bed carpeting the walls beautifully decorated. The only item which seems out of place is a single rose on a polished silver blood vase on my table. It is wilted and has turned a dark blood red. We want that rose. It's like a dead wilted rose. You know, two days after the party is over, the hangover is almost gone. Still, it's somehow intriguing. You heft it gently from the stem and look closer. It's a rose all night. The sharp thorns prove it. As you replace the rose on the table, you notice a tiny card just behind where the rose was on, this, on its coaster. Shall we read the card? Of course you read the card. The letter says, For a good time, call Cricket. What? Okay, let's search. On closer inspection, the coaster of the vase appears to be a small papyrus code wheel inscribed with hieroglyphics on the outside ring and two rings of letters on the side. We want the code wheel, the code wheel's important. The code wheel is stuck to the table and refuses to budge, but little prying finally gets it, used. Gets it loose. Examine the code wheel. The code wheel looks to be well used. But it's still fun fully functional. The front is plain Jane in every way, but the back has a handwritten note that reads, Help! I cannot get out of the dungeon! Jer. Well, sucks to be you. Let's go west. We are missing something, though. We are missing shield and flint, and we need both of them. I distinctly remember needing both. Waiting room. Uh, south. I get the feeling we are meant to go... Oh. Where are we here? Another hole and a long one at last. 
There is a door to the south and another one to the west. The rug in the south door shows dirt and mud, as though it has been tracked in from the outside. There are large windows to the east wall, looking out over part of a castle garden. A massive iron bolt which formerly secured the door in the south wall lies open and useless. You see on the floor an emerald ring. Let's get that. Ooh. The ring fits snugly around your little finger, but it appears to be designed for a much smaller person than yourself. Still, it seems to glow with a light of its own. We're going north. I'm not going here yet. We're missing the flint and we're missing the shield. Two items I know I need. I know I need these items. There's no exit that looks like we could go north, but we're gonna go north. And we can't go on any of these stairs. The dungeon room. Well, we're gonna go north again. The reason why we're gonna go north is because we're going to go west in this room. Yes, this room. I think it's west. If there's a dragon, I'm going to be very upset. No, no, we, we want to be here. You're in a large, empty room. Pegs protrude from the walls and various articles are stacked about. There are old rags and chunks of broken pottery in the corner of the room. And there's garbage on the floor. Lots of junk, mainly. It looks like this was, or is, a place the inhabitants store things they no longer needed. You hear the squeals and squeaks of large rats who scurry around. Rummaging around here will probably stir a rat or three. You see the following items. A heavy tattoo shield. The traditional adventure gamer's flint. Well, we'll get the shield. You struggle a bit to lift the shield off the ground. It's very heavy. No doubt intended for use by a person in tip-top shape and built like an ox. Only stronger. The shield is liftable with some trouble. It's too heavy for you to carry in front of you, as it was no doubt intended. However, you manage to sling the shield over your shoulder and across your back, just comfortably enough to walk. It's like carrying a large backpack. We'll get the flint. The flint fits nicely into your hip pocket, but you'll have to watch your step lest your motions light a fire under yourself, so to speak. We are not going to search. We are going to search. Because I'm a fool. No, 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 there's nothing. We're going to go east... E east, and then we're going to go east again, because I'm curious as to if that's where the dining hall is, because the dining hall is where there is another death, that I distinctly remember. I could just die here, would be interesting. Yes, here we go. Here we go. Found it. You're in a long, spacious dining room. Still on the huge dining table are the remnants of food from a recent feast. There are a few scraps of meat and pieces of bread. Some very expectant rats near the garbage bin are eyeing an arrogant, cold black cat, who is regally eyeing them with, while blocking their route to the table and its fallen treasures. Looking around, you see an elegant tapestry and a coat of arms hanging over the cavernous fireplace in the north wall. There is a heavy wooden door leading west and a similar but very small door on the east side. Ooh. Razor sharp sword. Get the sword? Well, have a sword now. Now, let us do something that you are not meant to do. But I will save before we do this, so give me a moment. My good sir, what are you not meant to do with this banquet? And that is eat it. <laughs> something obviously has it in for the rat's ca castle's rat population. As these scrapes, as these scraps here have. No, these scraps have sat here for so long they've become virtually poisonous. You hungrily scarf up the remaining scraps from one end of the table. A giddy sickness seizes you almost immediately, and your stomach ties itself and you into knots. You fall on the floor. Momentarily, the cat turns a disinterested gaze your way. We are dead. It appears I have died. There are many ways to die in this game, but that's the foolish one. You don't eat the scraps. The scraps will end your life. So until then, folks, we'll be back. We won't have poisoned ourselves and I've grabbed the sword. So until then, folks, until then, I will catch you later. See you then.